Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're well. In this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to create that dark, moody, kind of gritty, urban look that you may have seen on Instagram or other places where you got a city scene and it's kind of just amped up, but it has a certain specific look, what I call a dark, urban look. It's really easy to do in Luminar Neo. We're gonna do that in this video. We're gonna get started right now. I've got this photo, which I've already cropped and uh, done minor adjustments to. If you look in edits, you can see I've done develop raw and super contrast, but what I want to do is create the look that is dark and moody and urban. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, that's what I'm talking about. This look right here, which I think looks super cool, uh, but I get questions about, you know, how do you do these kind of things? I'm going to show you how you do that. Now, I've already done, uh, as I said, develop raw and super contrast. What I want to do next, because it's kind of an urban kind of gritty uh, look, I'm gonna add some structure and I'm gonna add it across the whole photo, which I don't always do. And I'm actually gonna boost it as well, which I also don't really do that often, but it gives it a nice little crunch, nice little pop. So if you look at the before and the after, I think that's looking really good. It brings up a lot of the texture and the concrete and the building, but it also brings up the texture and kind of that moodiness in the sky. If you look at the clouds before and currently, it uh, I think it helps quite a bit. So having done that, I'm gonna jump into Accent AI and I'm gonna do like maybe a 25 here. And then I'm gonna do another 20, 23 in the sky. And so if you look at the before and the after, before and after Accent AI and the Sky Enhancer AI are great at giving you that extra little bit of pop. And that can make the difference in an edit and also gives it a little bit of brightening. And uh, I think that works well because what we're gonna do now is turn to color. And as you saw in the example photo, there's a big, big shift in color. And you don't do that with the tool that you may think I'm gonna use. You might think that I'm gonna use something like Color Harmony, Color Balance, but I'm not. I'm going old school and I'm using just the color tool. Now, the reason I'm gonna use the color tool is this section down here below, HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. Hue is like the shade of the color. Saturation is the intensity. And Luminance is the brightness value. Well, I'm gonna start in the Hue. And what I wanna do is take the oranges and reds, and I wanna go slightly left, not a ton, just a little bit. They're already pretty orange and red um, in, the, uh, in the oranges and yellows. They're pretty, pretty intense, but I wanna take those and make them a little bit more kind of to the orange and that red kind of feel. Now that I'm done with hue, I'm gonna jump into saturation. This will make a huge difference when you check this out. I'm gonna take the red and the orange and the yellow, and I'm gonna go slightly to the right. They don't really need a lot of saturation. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a bump. So I'm not even sure how well you can tell before and after. Overall, so far, the color shifts have been pretty minor, but this is where you start to notice the difference. Uh, the saturation for the green, the cyan, the blue, see the blue coming down, that's a massive one. Even purple and magenta, there's not really a lot of that in this photo, but I'm bringing it all down. And so that has made a huge impact on this photo. If you look at how blue and saturated, which I love, um, but if we're going for this look, you don't want those rich blues in there. You want to get rid of them. So before and after. So those blues have been taken care of, but there's another thing you got to do, and that is go into luminance. And I'm going to do slightly brighter on the reds, oranges, and yellows, but I'm also going to do the same thing as I did on saturation, which is take these other colors and really drop them in terms of the luminance, and especially the blue. That one had a huge impact. In fact, I probably went too far. But if you look at that now, before and after, with this HSL moves I've made, before and after, before and after, it's really the primary colors that are there are the warm colors, the oranges, the reds, the yellows, and everything else is desaturated and darker, and it's creating that color contrast and that mood that I'm talking about. So one more time, before and after. Now, that's the color move that we make, but there's still a few other things you gotta do to really wrap up a photo like this. So in develop, I'm gonna get a mask and I'm gonna get a linear gradient and I'm gonna drag that right here because I wanna kind of frame that foreground. It's just a little bit too dark, uh, excuse me, too bright. And what I wanna do is darken it. So something about like that. But you'll notice that's also making this little sign where it says US Route 66 on the ground. So I'm gonna double up on my mask and go get a brush and an eraser, and make a really small brush. And I'm gonna do this quickly and sloppily, but what I wanna do is erase that mask from this sign that's on the ground. Now, I recommend you go slow and you zoom in 
so that you really do a better job than I'm doing here. But in the interest of time, um, I think this will at least communicate the point, which is stacking mass and taking control over the light is going to help. So now I've got this linear gradient darkening the foreground, but I didn't lose visibility into that little white sign there, which I really liked. And that was part of the reason I framed the shot this way. So I've done that and I think that looks good. And now I can frame the rest of the shot with the vignette. So this is pretty simple stuff here. And I'm going to do a little bit rounder and high feathering, a little bit of inner light. And something about like that I think looks pretty nice before and after. Now, here's the, here's the rest of this stuff um, that I like to do, which is depending on the photo, you might want to come back and do a couple other things just to kind of amp up that feeling and that mood. We're already deep into editing land. This is not exactly how it looked. So what I'll often do is come back and add a little bit extra drama. And I do that in the form of a little additional contrast, right? So that's creating contrast across the entire image, just giving a little bit more intensity. So before and after. And sometimes what I like to do is come in and actually take the temperature and go left. Now, that's going to make everything a little bit cooler. And you're thinking, hey, Jim, you desaturated the blues to get this look. And I did, and that's what I wanted to do. But I'm giving it a little bit of a blue tint, which to me kind of leans into the whole blue hour city kind of shot versus just uh, desaturating the blues. The blues are still desaturated, but I've cooled off the overall frame, if you will. But also for me, that coolness plays off well with the warmth that I accentuated with all my moves in HSL. And so I'm playing that cool and warm off of each other. It'll depend on the photo. Everyone is different, of course, but I think it looks nice. So a little bit more contrast and a little bit cooler overall before and after. And then sometimes, this is another why, reason why every photo is different. Sometimes you might want a little bit more visibility on your subject. For me, that really old car is super cool. So I'm gonna go into the masking and develop again. I'm gonna get object select and I'm gonna grab that car. I've highlighted that by clicking it and I'm just gonna briefly uh, or lightly lift the exposure and maybe pull up the whites a little bit. And all I'm doing is just creating a little bit better visibility into my main subject. So before and after. And that, my friends, is how I went about creating that look from that photo, right? So lots of color, lots of blue, lots of different colors as well. Now I've got that desaturated urban black, that moody urban look. I don't have any idea what it's called. But that look is quick and easy to make in Luminar Neo just by playing with HSL. And that's how I did this one, and that's how you can do it as well. One more time, before and after. That's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps. Leave any comments down below, and don't forget to get my free Luminar Editing ebook at the link below as well. I'll see you next time, friends. You guys take care, and until then, adios.